Hey everyone, today I'm going to teach you how to make clip-in hair extensions using your Maven hair. Clip-in extensions are great for those looking for a fast and easy temporary style change. Clip-ins are great for clients who want to add extra density and fullness throughout their hair. They're also great for a pop of color or highlights throughout your hair. Now clip-ins are temporary extensions and should not be slept in. They should be removed at the end of each night. It takes about 5 to 10 minutes to completely install your clip-in extensions. To make these extensions, you'll need scissors, weaving thread, curved sewing needles, the clip-in clips that come in a variety of colors like black, brown, and even for blonde hair. Your first step is going to be to thread your sewing needles. To do so, you'll take your thread, you're going to take one end of your thread and a curved sewing needle and you're going to weave it through the tiny hole. Once you have your two ends, you want to take them together and tie them in a knot and then tie one more knot. Take your scissors and cut off the excess so that it doesn't stick out on your wefts. and it should look just like this. Then you're going to take your bundle that you have and cut the elastic band. And be careful not to cut any hair. So once you have your bundle completely unwrapped, you are going to leave the wefts doubled in half just like this. The reason you want to double your webs and sew them together is so that when you create your clip-in extension, it's going to be a lot fuller than just one web. Then you're gonna take your needle and thread and the two loose ends of the web, and you're going to sew these together all the way until the web is finished on the other side of the fold. Taking the two ends of the webs and matching them together. Then you're gonna penetrate through the weft at the ends and feed the thread through. Before it gets all the way to the end, just go ahead and loop it through so you lock the thread. You are now going to sew right around the weft. So again, go up and through. Wrap your thread around, and then you're gonna pull your thread through. And lock it at the top of the weft. And you just wanna keep on continuing that method all the way until you get to the end of the other folded side. Going directly under and straight up once you go under and wrapping it around will help your thread go straight to the top and not push the hair over. So going straight under and right above in the same instance that you went over. Wrapping it around and coming up through the top. When you're finishing up sewing the weft, you want to make sure you penetrate the weft so that the end stays flat. So go straight through the weft and then take the thread, loop it around and pull it through. Now once you get to the end, you just tie a knot and cut the thread off. So once you're done, your wefting should look just like this. All the top and all the side, all the way to the end. Okay. 
Once your wefts are sewn together, measure the nape of your neck and cut the wefts where needed. Now you wanna be sure not to measure it too far because then your clips will be seen from the outside of your hairline. So what you wanna do is measure to about here on both sides. And once you measure there with your weft, you want to cut the weft. So measuring from here to here. Once you have your exact measurement, mark it with your thumb, and then you want to cut the weft. To properly cut the weft, cut from above, going straight down. Once you cut your weft, you wanna pull away any excess hair that could shed later. So this is going to be your first track, which goes in the back of your neck. Before we sew the clips onto the wefts, we wanna prep all the clips and open them. So take your clip, and snap it open. Doing this helps you to prevent from sewing the clip on in the wrong direction. The direction you wanna have your clip on is with the comb on the outside. This is with your clip closed, and this is with your clip open. The reason we want to open our clips is to prevent us from sewing it on the wrong way. It's so easy when it's closed to sew it on backwards with the bar facing you. But once you make this mistake, it's really hard to clip the extension onto your root area. So again, just to prevent you from making the mistake, open all your clips so that the comb is facing the outside of the weft. So we're going to take our clip and the comb is facing the outside of the weft and it is still open. And we're gonna place it at the end of the weft. Once you place your clip at the end of the weft, you want to take your needle and thread and thread the needle through the weft and through a tiny hole like that. This is the hole we're going to put the needle through. And so you wanna place that hole right on top of the weft. So when you sew through, you're gonna go through both wefts. So before the, the knot gets to the ends, we wanna just go inside so we can make sure that it is secure without having to tie another knot. So once you get the thread on the weft, you can go right back through and through the weft again. At the end is the only time we'll go through the weft. The reason you wanna prevent going through the weft every single time is because going through the weft can encourage shedding and we do not want the hair to shed. Now that we've gone through one hole, we don't wanna just end it and go through the hole all the way at the end. We want to go through the comb teeth and around the weft this time, not through the weft, around the weft. So going directly under and pulling upward. And then go through, you can skip one. And then go through, skip a row. And last around the weft. And then now that we are at the end, we're going to go through that hole on the other side. And then remember, as we did in the beginning, we're going to go through the weft this time since we're ending our thread. So going straight through the weft and straight through the little hole. Penetrate it, go straight through, wrap the thread around and pull the needle tight. And just to secure it, we're gonna go ahead and do that same step once more. So go through the weft and the hole, wrap your thread around and pull it through to the top. The way I tie my threads off is to take the needle, weave it through in a hole, and I place this all the way at the bottom of the weft, hold my thumb down and pull the thread. And that will make the knot be at the base. And then I'll repeat that process one more time. So wrapping it around, making it at the base, putting my thumb over it and pulling the thread. 
Okay, so then I'll make the knot all the way at the bottom. You'll take your scissors and cut. So once you end it off and tie a knot, your clip should open easy and it should be pretty seamless. So to clip it in the hair, you want to open the clip and positioning it at the root area, you would go straight through and then close the clip by bending it against the scalp. And you will begin to hear click. So that extension is not going anywhere. Okay, so now we're just gonna sew a clip on the other side and that is how you do your first row. So to unclip it, you would just bend it backwards and it clip removes easily out of the hair. And not going anywhere and then unclip to remove, pretty easy. So now we're just gonna do the other side. Just wanted to show you how it clips into the hair. So taking our next clip, making sure that it's open and the clip and the comb is facing outward. Take the other side of your weft, starting from the end, take the needle through the hole and through the weft at the same time. And just to lock the thread, we're just gonna go through. So now we're going to go around the weft. And now that we're at the end of the clip, we're gonna go through the top hole and through both wefts. And repeat the same thing again. And through the hole and through both wefts. Now you just want to tie a knot to end off the thread. And that is your first clip-in extension. So you can open and close the wefts. So you'll place the extensions at the top of the parting and comb down and snap and do the same thing on the other side. Take the extension, comb down and snap. Okay, and that's your first one. Now let's just say your hair is a little bit too fine and the clip-in extensions really slide out of your hair. So one of the methods you can do is just to not worry for one. So if your hair is too fine, this is a method you can use for clipping in your extensions. You would take your, out your entire section, then you would take a skinny sliver at the top of your section and do a really tiny braid and then taking your open clip you would place it in the braid. So that way your extensions won't slip if your hair is too fine. And this will give a way sturdier base, especially if you like to finger through your extensions throughout the day, they will not move, okay? See all that pulling, it's not coming out. This is a method you can use when you have really fine hair. Just be sure not to make your braid go all the way to the end, so that way you can have some hair to lay over your extensions in case you want a ponytail or any other thing you may want to do. So leave out your edges when you do do a small braid, so that way if the wind blows or you, or you bend over to grab something, your extensions aren't going to show. Okay, perfect. So now you want to continue out this process and you want to measure your next extension starting about here. And then your next one going about here, from ear to ear. And then when you're done, you want to come from here all the way around, and another row all the way around, all the way until you get about here, okay? That would be a full head. You'll probably have about seven or eight rows so your pieces are gonna get too long to only have two clips. So once you finish your two clips on the ends, 
If you snap it to the hair and there's still a lot of wiggle room, you wanna make sure to put another clip in the middle. This is gonna to help to ensure that your clips won't just move around and bulge out in your head. It'll be secure and tight. So we're just gonna add another clip in this middle section by following the same step as before. So once you finish installing your third clip, your weft should look just like this. So this is what your weft will look like when you sew down four clips. And it's better to just do four instead of three so that way the weft will be more secure and you'll have way less wiggle room when you clip in your extensions. So once you complete your second bundle, this is how many tracks you should have. So I have two nape pieces with two clips, and then I have two three clips, and then I have one other one that's enough to be three clips, but I just didn't add a third one. Then we have longer ones with three clips on them, just like so, and then two four clip ones. So once you're done with your full head, two bundles, feel free to do three if your lengths are way longer because the wefts are shorter the longer your bundles are. For instance, a 28 inch bundle, the weft would be really short compared to a 12 inch bundle, the weft would be a lot longer. So you're gonna have to accommodate for longer lengths when you're making clip-in extensions for a full head. So with lengths longer than 24, I would suggest to get at least three bundles and four if you like extra fullness. You can store your clip-ins by stacking them on top of each other. And I line up the longest weft at the bottom, which is the four clips. And then I just stack them switching from one side to another so that it's all in an even row. So once you get it in a nice even row, take a clip and collect the wefts from the top and just clip them together and do the same thing on the other side. Now you can move them around and they won't come loose and they'll be nice and neat for when you're ready to put them back in your hair. You can see how full the hair is. This is just two bundles and actually I didn't cut the ends of these. It's actually really that even and full towards the ends. And this is the Peruvian straight hair in 16 inches. As for my hair, I'm wearing the Peruvian straight in 18, 20, and 20 inches. And I've had this hair in for about two months now. This is my second install. I colored the hair into a bleached ombre balayage, and then I colored it with Joy Cole's semi-color, semi-permanent color intense. And it's kind of faded now, but my hair is still holding up great, and I curl it almost every single day, and the ends still look great, and it's full of life, and I'm loving it. So if you would like to purchase your Maven hair, you can go to www.shop.maven.com. And all Maven products have a 30-day quality guarantee. So if you're not satisfied with the quality of Maven hair, they definitely have exchange and refund options available. Just give customer service a call and they'll help you take care of your order. Thanks guys, I'll see you in the next video.